reached the first day of February and that means that it is time for the first reading wrap up of 2016. So stay tuned if you would like to see what books I actually ended up finishing in January. It is Samantha. I hope you guys have had a great day. I am here today with my January wrap-up, the first wrap-up of 2016. Already this year is going by fast, just like last year and the year before that and the one before that. And I'm basically going to be dead before I know it. But aside from that bleakness, I am actually here to share with you guys the books that I read in January, what I hope to read in February, and some of the statistics for my reading month because I am an accountant and I like to add numbery things. Numbery isn't even a word, but you know. I'm an accounting major, not an English major. So without further ado, let us start with this January wrap up. So in the month of January, I ended up reading a total of seven books and I started two others but did not finish them because they were thick and I started them at the end of the month. Of the books that I read, I ended up reading a total of 2,656 pages. This gives an average page count per book of about 379 and it averages to about 86 pages read a day. Of the books that I read, one was science fiction, five of them were fantasy, one was a classic, and then of the two that I started but did not finish, one was a classic and one was a fantasy. Of the books that I read, 42% were mass market paperbacks, 28% were hardbacks, and the other 28% were trade paperbacks. I had a pretty even split in between genders of authors, 42% were female and the other 57 were male. In terms of years published, one was published prior to the 1920s, two were published in the 1980s, and the rest of them were published in the 2000s. In terms of the country of origin of the authors that I read, the largest percentage was of course the United States, the others were the United Kingdom, New Zealand, and Canada. In terms of star ratings, I had one book that was two stars, one that was three stars, one that was three and a half stars, three that were four stars, and one that was five stars. So that is it for the statistics for my reading month for January. And now I'm going to tell you what those actual books were, which is like the most important part of this video. So let's just get into this. The first book that I finished in January was Shadowfell by Juliette Marillier. This is the first book in her Shadowfell trilogy. It follows our main protagonist, Naren, who is a young girl in this land that is kind of reminiscent of medieval Ireland. She is hiding a certain magical ability, an ability that allows her to see and interact with the Fae. The thing is, in this world, all people with these types of abilities are completely wiped out because the only people that can have them are the king and his henchmen. His henchmen will go through and purge the people that are said to have these powers and so she's kind of on the run and she's trying to run to this camp this place that is hiding a rebel camp and she wants to join the rebels and use her powers for good and kind of free the land of Alban from the evil king and his henchmen. I ended up really really liking this story a lot. Julia Berlioz has a beautiful way of telling the story. It's very ly lyrical, very whimsical. I love her fae elements. I love the way that she portrays the fae. Every single time I read one of her books I just oh I just love it so much. I love the character of Naren. She was very strong and she didn't let anything stand in her way of what she believed and what she was fighting for. There was a little bit of romance but it wasn't as insty lovey as some of her other books have been so I actually really enjoy the romantic elements. Overall I just ended up really enjoying this one and I ended up giving it five out of five stars. The next book that I finished in January was The Dragon Prince by Melanie Ron. This is the first book in the Dragonlands Chronicles I think it's called. I'm probably, I'm not sure actually. I feel like that's what the series is called but I'm not entirely certain but needless to say it was a very entertaining book. It follows our young prince Rowan and he ends up inheriting the kingdom and the, his kingdom kind of resides in this dragonlands, this desert that is known for dragons. And he ends up taking over this princedom after his father dies and he ends up kind of getting into a power struggle with the high king, the high prince who kind of is the overlord of all these little princes and he ends up getting into a power struggle with him and he is soon joined by Sinead who ends up becoming his love and his bride, this person that he is destined to marry and together they kind of set out to make his dream for the future become a reality. So he has a specific idea of how he would like to see the world to be shaped for the better for everyone, but he has to kind of overthrow this prince who is an evil man and there's a lot of interwoven plot points going on. There's a lot of political intrigue and there are dragons. So I actually expected the dragons to take more of a forefront in this book than they did, though it is my understanding that they take more of a forefront in the rest of the book. So I'm looking forward to that. I like the character of Sinead a lot. She was a fabulous character. She was very strong-willed. She really fought for what she believed in. She had her convictions and her ideals and she clung to them. She was just a really enjoyable character. Rowan was a little bit annoying at times. He was really, really whiny, particularly towards the end of the book. So I was kind of 
iffy on whether or not I liked him. I also felt he was kind of an ass a lot to Sinead at times, and he just wasn't my favorite character. I have heard that he gets better as the books go on, so I look forward to encountering that. This book also features a really interesting magic system. These people, such as Sinead, are called Sunrunners. They draw their ability and their power from the use of the sun, so they use the sun to kind of control their power, and they can do different things, such as call fire, and have visions, and see other places in the world, and it's just a really interesting magical system, so I thought that was pretty cool, using sun and light in general, because I think at some point they, even use, they can even use the moon and the stars and like different colors and things so it was really interesting magic system so I really enjoyed that. It wasn't actually very tropey as some of the 80s fantasy can be. It actually had a lot of really original elements that I really enjoyed about the story and I ultimately ended up rating it four out of five stars. The next book that I finished in January was Elf Stones by Terry Brooks. I did not like this book at all. I should have known I didn't like it. I tried to read Terry Brooks Sword of Shannara years ago like 14, 15 years ago. I couldn't get through it. I DNF'd it after like not even 100 pages. I felt so reminiscent to the Lord of the Rings. I mean, he was going beyond just pulling influence from Tolkien and he was like bordering on flat out copying Tolkien and I just couldn't handle it and I didn't think the writing was that great. But I thought, you know what, the show is coming out. I'm going to give him a second try and read the Elfstones. Still not a fan of Terry Brooks at all. I really do not like the way that he tells his story. He's extremely repetitive. He repeated the same thing about what was going on with the tree like five different times to different characters and he wasn't just mentioning it again. He was full on out writing out the exact same crap that he was saying the other few times that he had had it mentioned. So he kept being extremely repetitive. The characters were kind of annoying, like the main character, Will, could be kind of annoying at times and he was making stupid decisions. Like at one point, he sees these people, these rovers, and he's like, oh no, they, we should stay away from them. They steal from you. And then they went to sleep and they didn't place a watch. And then they woke up and all their crap was stolen and he was shocked that their stuff was stolen. And I'm like, you just went to sleep next to people that are known thieves and you're surprised that your horse was stolen. Like. So, I was not the biggest fan of this book. It was really, really hard to get through. It was really slow, it was repetitive. The, overall, I thought the concept, the idea behind the book, the idea behind the story, I thought was well done. I thought it was a very interesting story. It follows these elves and their tree is dying and they need a way to rescue the tree because the tree, the Elkris, is what is preventing all these demons from returning to the land. And it was just a cool concept. The execution was terrible. So I am not a fan of this book. I don't recommend it. I say to stick with the TV show. I've watched the first episode. It was okay. I think I'm going to wait until it's out on Netflix or Amazon before I finish watching it. But I definitely say to stick with the TV show because the book left a lot to be desired. And I ultimately ended up rating it two out of five stars. I would have rated it one, but I did like the concept of the story. And so I gave it an extra star for that reason. But overall, the story just not the best. The next book that I finished in January was The Night Blade by Garrett Robinson. I received this from the author in exchange for a free and honest review. The story follows our main character Lauren who grows up in a village next to a forest. She is born to extremely abusive parents and one day she ends up seeing this man fleeing through the woods and she follows him and she discovers that he is a wizard and she coerces him into making him take her along because she wants to escape her father and mother. He agrees and so she ends up fleeing with this wizard to kind of make a life of her own. She always dreamed of becoming a thief, somebody that protects the rights of those below you, people who can't fend for themselves and she wants to call herself Nightblade and she wants to make that dream come true. So she steals the knife from her parents' house, this mysterious knife, and she ends up setting out in the world of this wizard. He soon ditches her and she kind of has to make her way on her own and the story kind of takes off from there. She kind of discovers more about herself as she's out in the land and who she wants to be as well as discovering that the knife that she took from her parents house kind of has an interesting history. People seem to recognize it and she's not quite sure why. So she kind of gets tangled up in with this rover caravan and the events kind of take off from there and overall I enjoyed it. I thought the story was very original. I liked the character of Lauren. She could be a little bit whiny at times but overall I thought she was pretty strong willed. She kind of fought to make a better life for herself and I really liked that about her. Parts of it felt a little bit tropey like stereotypical fantasy. The main character who is coming from a hard life is going to become the hero of the story in the land and that kind of an idea, but I also felt that the dialogue was a little bit awkward at times. He wrote it in a way that felt extremely old fashioned. He was having the kids talk this way, like there's a 10 year old boy that to me felt like he was talking more like he was 20 or more. And it kind of reminded me a little bit of a Shakespearean way of writing the dialogue. It wasn't horrible, it was just a little bit distracting at times and it didn't feel completely realistic. So that part kind of got to me a little bit at times. Sometimes I wouldn't notice it, sometimes it'd be really, really obvious that the way they were talking was very, 
structured. It didn't feel natural. So overall I enjoyed it and I ended up rating it three out of five stars. This is the first book in a series and I believe the next book is out. So I do want to continue on to see what's going to happen with our main characters because the way the story ends, I'm very intrigued to see what's going to happen. So it's not the best, it's not the worst. And overall I rated it three out of five stars, which for me is like, a good book, not the best, not the worst, just okay. So the next book that I finished in January was one I bought this month and I was so excited when I saw it, and it is Doctor Who, The Time Lord Fairy Tales. These are written by Justin Richards and feature a bunch of Time Lord twists on a lot of our known fairy tales. So the stories include The Garden of Statues, which is a Weeping Angel story, Cinderella and the Magic Box, Frozen Beauty, we have Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, and various ones like that. Overall, I really enjoyed it. So I ended up writing each short story individually. So the first book, Garden of Statues, I gave five out of five stars. Frozen Beauty, I gave two stars. Cinderella and the Magic Box, I gave four and a half stars. The Twins in the Wood, I gave three and a half out of four stars. The Three Little Santorans, I gave two and a half out of five stars. Jack in the Wormhole, I gave three and a half out of five stars. Snow White and the Seven Keys of Doomsday, I gave five out of five stars. Little Rose Riding Hood, I gave four and a half out of five stars. The Gingerbread Trap, I gave three and a half out of five stars. The Scruffy Piper, I gave two and a half out of five stars. Helena and the Beast, I gave four stars. And Deba and the Four Slothene, I gave three stars. The Grief Collector, I gave four and a half stars. The Brothers Gruff, I gave three stars, and Sir Gawain and the Green Knight, I gave four stars. Overall, I averages out to about three and a half stars, which is overall rating I gave to this book. Really enjoyable. If you're a Doctor Who fan, I recommend picking this one up because it was a lot of fun. It featured a lot of our favorite doctors, and I just really liked the science-y, sci-fi-y, doctor-y twist on all of our fairy tales. It was really enjoyable. The next book I finished in January was Hounded by Kevin Hearn. This is the first book in the Iron Druid Chronicles. It is an urban fantasy retelling. It features our main character. Atticus, who is a 2100 year old druid who is living in Arizona. Atticus has been living peacefully in Arizona for many years, but then his old enemy, Angus Og, ends up coming to harass him once again to steal the sword of Fragara. It is a sword that Inga stole from him about 1500 years prior. He hasn't let it go and he wants it back. So as I say, Atticus's life is kind of thrown into turmoil as he is trying to fight off Angus and all of his henchmen, keep the sword safe, as well as becoming intertwined with the plots of the other goddesses. It's really enjoyable. It's a lot of fun. I found this book to be really funny. Atticus is a very smart assy character. It's just really, really entertaining. It takes place in Arizona and so there's a lot of modern elements with some Irish mythology thrown in and I just found it to be really really hilarious. Oberon, his Irish Wolfhound, is also a really great character. One of the best dogs ever. Like Oberon is fantastic. So I really enjoyed this one. I cannot wait to continue on with the series and I rated it four out of five stars. The last book that I ended up finishing in January was Merry Christmas and Other Stories by Louise May Alcott. I actually started this in December and had just been slowly reading the short stories. These are actually just excerpts from her various books such as Little Woman that feature Christmassy chapters and scenes and they're put into this one collection. I ended up really enjoying it. Louise May Alcott's works very heartwarming. They make you just feel all happy and warm and fuzzy inside. I've read some of these before. Some of them are new to me and I haven't read all of her books yet, but I really, really enjoyed it and ended up rating it four out of five stars. The next two are books that I started in January but have not yet finished, so they will will be finished in February. The first of those is Red Knight by Miles Cameron. This is a fantasy story that is very reminiscent of our world but takes place in its own world. So it features the same kind of historical and religious aspects from our own world. So they do have like Jesus and nuns and things like that. It takes place in what I would kind of call like the 12 to 1300s era of our world. It's really enjoyable and it features the main character, the Red Knight, or the Captain, he runs a band of mercenaries, and these mercenaries have been hired by a convent to protect them from these beasts in the wild, these demons and beasts and things that are kind of wanting to wage a war of their own. And once they find out that this is not just a lone demon or beast, it is in fact a full-scale war, things really start getting crazy and taking off. So I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm only about 200 pages into it, and I cannot wait to finish it up. I can definitely see why Michael from Bitten by a Radioactive Book is just one of his favorite books, and I can see why. It is just really, really really good and entertaining, a lot of fun, and I cannot wait to finish it up. The next book I started in January was David Copperfield by Charles Dickens. I have a goal of reading four more Charles Dickens books this year. The first one I decided to pick up was David Copperfield. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm only about 100 pages into it. It is told in first person perspective, and for some reason I really like it when Dickens writes from that narrative style. He doesn't do it very often. He did it in Great Expectations and with one of the characters in Bleak House. So I really like it when he does it, and I'm really enjoying David Copperfield. It's also partly auto biographical so it's just been an entertaining read for me so far and I also hope to finish this one up in February. All right guys that is it for my January wrap up. I will actually be putting my February TBR in a separate video because I am seeing this video is turning out to be quite long so 
Yes. You guys will have to let me know what your favorite read was from January and if you've read any of these, what your thoughts were. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great February. And until next time, happy reading. Bye. It is the first of February, which means that we are now. We have worked. Son of a bitch. So in the month of January, she.